again everyone we have another kind of quick tutorial to go over for you and this is going to be for the hands now the hand controls there are so many different ways that you can rig hands and a lot of it is really based on how many joints you have again I might have mentioned this and when we were creating them the more joints you have the more joints you have to rig the more joints you have to animate so when you see a rig that has kind of a glove hand with three fingers um, you know it might have been a style choice but it was also they knew that would be easier to rig than having two more fingers in there. So we're going to look at the hand controls. Now the hand controls, the setup is going to be very similar to how we set up the attributes on the foot control. That you can use set driven keys. Or you can set it up like we did with the spine and have controls. Um, so I'm going to show you both ways um, fairly quickly because it's repeating what we've done in other lessons. Now, no matter which method you choose, you're still going to need a hand control of some sort. You need a parent control that's going to move with the character's hand. Again, um, you can keep it nice and simple and make it as a little circle that's going to be on the character's, you know, floating above. You can reshape it to make it look like a glove. Again, doesn't matter. But it's going to be next to your character's hand. And I'm going to rotate this guy and turn joints off for a second. Nope, I don't want you. No, I don't want that. Okay, control vertices and move it so it's just floating in front of my character's hand. So this is gonna be my hand control. So again, I'm gonna show you two methods that you can do, but either method you need this guy here. So I've got a whole bunch of translation rotation craziness. So before I forget, modify, freeze those transformations and then rename this your hand control. This is my character. This is the left arm, so in that way it is the left hand control. Okay. So the first method I'm going to show you are set driven keys, like we did with setting up the foot control down at the bottom. So we're going to need an attribute, and I'm just going to do one finger because it would just get repetitive and it's really the exact same thing. So I'm going to go to add your attributes. I'm going to go up to the modify menu and add attribute. Now, when you're looking at the idea of the hand, the hand can do so many things. If you know your character has a position in the hand that um, is kind of like a you know a slogan or you know something they're going to repeat, think of like a peace sign or um, if it's Spider-Man, like Spidey hand moves. Um, if there's something you know is going to repeat a lot in the animation, well, you can make this basically as a preset to animate it to for the animator to work easier. And then you will also have one control for every single finger. So I will show you how to set up for the index finger, the pointer finger. So I'm just going to rename this attribute as index. And leaving as float, I'm going to set my minimum um, as negative one. And the idea of minimum being your fingers being kind of stretched out and alert. Maximum being a closed fist, which is going to be five. Um, something to keep in mind, if you had specific values on your feet controls, be consistent and use the same values here. So on your foot control, if you had 5 as your maximum, use 5 in the hand. If it was 10, use 10 in the hand. You want to, again, make it as easy as possible for the animator to know what they're doing so they don't have a whole bunch of number systems to remember. So again, I've got index, negative 1, 5, default 0, and OK. Again, if you were doing this for the entire hand, I would keep adding the other attributes for the other fingers, for an open-close thing, things like that. We're just going to keep this one simple. Now, before you can connect the attribute to the finger, you need to make sure your finger is set up properly. And that is looking at the joints and how they are oriented with each other. Um, if you saw the last tutorial we created on the spine, when we applied the one constraint, the joint flipped. That's because the orientation axis was not in line with the others, with the curve. And the idea of the hand, you need to be really careful with that and you want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Um, it's looking at the idea for these joints, when you rotate them, um, again, depending on the window you were and you created it, yours might be Y, green like mine, it might be red X, it might be blue Z, it doesn't matter. But whatever that joint is for that rotation for 
your control, you want to make sure the three joints or four joints in your finger are all the exact same and they're in line with each other. Now again, what I mean with this, I'm going to use my up and down arrows on my keyboard to go through my fingers. I've got my first index joint, I can see it's my Y. I'm going to go down, I can see it's my Y, and it's bottom is my blue Z. Technically, that last joint is a null joint, nothing's going to happen, but if you're lining everything else up, you might as well fix it so they're all together. But really, what I'm looking at, not only that, but I'm looking at that the um, angle is going to be the same as well. If you look at the angle of my Y, it's, you know, it's not a perfect um, vertical line, it's just slightly to the right. If I go down to my middle joint, it's very, very straight. This is a much straighter angle. I want to make sure that these are as clean as possible. Um, the other ones are actually okay. So if your joint, um, for example, I'm going to do something that's, you know, bad. Don't do this. But if you had a joint that was at an angle and then the one below it is like straight up and down, that's going to give you a broken finger. So we need to fix those. So I'm going to show you how to align them and make sure everything is correct so that way when you go and do the whole set driven key system, it'll work really cleanly for you. So what this is, is you are changing the orientation of the joint. Basically, this is the component of the joint. You think of any curve control, you right click to go to your components, and normally it's the control vertex to reshape it, right? Well, with the joint, we can't right click the joint. Um, there has some things in here that you can use, um, one of which we might use when we do the arms, but there's no, you know, rotation or anything set here. So what you have to do to get to this is what you're looking at um, based on your display is you should be seeing the little axis inside of the joint. It's that is what we're actually going to rotate and fix. So to change that you need to go into component mode which its hotkey is F8, function 8 key on your keyboard. Basically it's going to turn your joint blue, it's going to hide whatever um, transformation tool you're using. It's going to look like you can't do anything. That's just because it's not turned on right now. And we're going to go up to your selection modes. Again, right now this should be all gray. And you click on the very last one, the question mark. Then they're going to show up. Depending on if you have textures, if you have flat model, if you're in wireframe, you might not be able to actually see everything. I can see my little letters for my axes, but I can't see the lines. If I go into wireframe, they'll show up. If you have a very dense model and it's still hard to see these, just turn your model off so you can see them. That'd be the same idea. If I turn the layer off, I'd be able to see them just great and not have any wireframe to kind of mess with. So again, what I'm looking at with this is I can select the actual axis itself now, clicking on the line or the letter, and I can use my rotate tool to make sure they are lined up together. And I had that slight angle. So looking at my um, axis, X is pointing to my child. That's good. Go down to my next one. X is to the child, that's good. But again, you can see the difference. It's not an angle, it's pretty straight. So what you can do to keep that rotation clean is I can rotate it to match it, to match that angle. Again, I'll undo and kind of zoom in a bit closer so you can really see what I'm changing. If you look at the idea of the joint as a 3D object, the vertical crosshair um, is representing the joints. So I can rotate this to line it up with the point of the joint above it. Again, that point is pointing to the child, so I can line it up to match with it. Now, I don't have to be absolutely perfect. That's a bit extreme. Again, think of your geometry, what it's doing. But I can line it up so it's not perfectly straight up and down. And this is going to clean up the rotation for animating. Again, the bottom joint, the null joint, again, doesn't really matter because it's nothing's going to be applying to it. But since I'm here, you might as well. It's going to keep it clean. I'm going to rotate my Y to match the same directions. So what's going on? Again, try to match the angle of the top joint and keep that slight angle to it. And then even though there's no children, I'm going to put X down just so I'm safe. And go to my next joint and do the same thing. Oops, I accidentally selected some curves. They're highlighting over there. That's all right. X is down. My first one, 
You can see the middle finger is nice and straight, as they typically will be. This one's slightly off, get it nice and straight. Again, the child, Y, and X. So you would go through and do that to all your fingers. Again, I'm not, just because it would be repetitive. When you're happy, hit F8. It gets you out of component mode, you're back to your joints. Again, if you hid your mesh, you can bring your mesh back and see everything that you're doing. So now we can control these guys. So again, this is going to be set driven key, just like we did with the reverse foot. I'm going to bring up my menu, which is under animate, set driven key, and set. Again, up top is the driver. This is always going to be the one with your custom attributes. This is the one that you are using to drive and control something else. So selecting my hand control and load driver. And there's my nice little index control. And then I'm going to bring the joints in the bottom. Again, if you had another joint down here, I would shift select that one as well. Load driven. Now, the way the system works when you load in more than one object in the driven is you can only see attributes for one at a time. So if this confuses you, just do the first joint on its own, then the second. If you understood the process really well from before, load them both in and you can just keep doing it after another. So as soon as I click in my driven list, my first joint, its information appears. Now again, based on my rotation, I'm going to be rotate Y. Again, look at your rotation axis. Whatever is the axis that's going to bend the actual finger, that's the axis you need to choose. Again, with set driven key, we always set that default key of this is where we start from. So hitting the key button. Since I have two things listed, I'm going to go to my second joint. Can it still rotate Y? Because I made sure all my axes were aligned. And key again. Now I'm going to set my maximum. Again, index value to 5. And go back to the joint, rotate it, because this again would be the idea of almost closing the fist. And key, select my second guy, rotate it, and key. And visually, my index now will open and close. I'm going to have to line that back up. My finger is not in geometry, that doesn't look very good. Now, the idea of my negative one, what that um, is doing is you're just giving your animator flexibility. If I set this to negative one for my joint, I'm looking at it going slightly up for it. Again, it's flexible. Do it to your own fingers. Your fingers can move slightly up above their hands. Um, it's not something we do a lot, but it is possible. So I'm giving the animator that flexibility. So with, again, index at negative one, selecting my first index joint, key it, second joint, key it. So now my hand can go for the finger, can go back and forth. Again, zero being the default position. So if you like set driven key, do that for your entire hand. Your thumb can actually have two attributes. Again, just think of the idea how the thumb itself rotates. You can have an attribute for in and out, the thumb coming into the hand, and an attribute for up and down of it going above. Think of the idea of a thumbs up to kind of how it can curl into the hand. So go ahead and separate those. You can have two attributes for the two rotations. Now again, I said I'd show you two methods. So set driven key is one. Again, this is by people that really like to use attributes. If you're making a rig that you want to use more controls, well, set it up just like you did the spine. That I can create a very small little NURB circle teeny tiny, probably doesn't even need to be that big. I'm going to hide my mesh because this one's really small. And snap it up. I'll use my middle finger as the example for here. And snapping it to the middle joint. Again, use your mesh to make sure that your character will be able to actually see this. Um, but not cross over the others. So like 0.2, that's, you know, that's too big. 0.15, that's better. And they could be squares, it doesn't have to be circles. But snap it to the joint, and then I would rename this. Um, again, it's your left hand, so it's my um, middle, so I can just use mid, left, 01, control. And then I would duplicate it, again, just control D, snap it to the next joint, rename it mid. 02, 
control. Okay, if you have a third joint in your hand, I would make another one. Again, this is a null joint, that's not going to do anything, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you had another section, if your hand was you know, more realistic, not this kind of cartoony, go ahead and make another one. Now, with the idea of my hand being curved, I am going to rotate this control as well, so it's in line with the joint. If your hand's perfectly straight out, leave the control straight. Um, just like you did with the spine, make sure you do a modify freeze transformations, clean those guys up, and then do constraints. Select my curve, shift select my joint, and they again are orient constraints. I'm looking at rotating my joints, so I am orient constraining them. Same for the first one. And then just like we did with the spine going up to the head, we parented them back down to the root. So with the idea of my hand, I would select whatever is the most bottom control, shift select the one above it, parent. So that way when I select that top knuckle control and I rotate it, my whole finger is going to rotate with it. Select the one beneath, it rotates on its own. Shift select both of them and I'm going to start to curl my finger. Now here's a difference of a preference of what you like to do. If you're using the attributes with the set driven key, you gave a very specific limit to what the animator can do. If you use controls, there's no limit here. Your animator could technically break the rig. They could keep turning this so far that their finger kind of comes into the back of the hand and is broken. Or all the way into the hand and is broken. So at the same time, this is also much more flexible than the set driven key. The set driven key did just rotate Y. Your controls, I can do both directions. Now, granted, your middle finger doesn't really turn and rotate that much, but you can do this move. If I did it, for example, just the one top knuckle, you can do this with your middle finger. You can move it back and forth. So there are people that really like controls because of that extra flexibility. It's giving the animator and there are no limits. So that's your preference of what you want to do. And then again, you would repeat it to all the other ones. Um, when you have all of the controls, you would then take those top knuckle controls and parent them to the hand control. So again, you'd have the one hand to control that controls everything for you. For the hand control itself, leave it on its own right now. Don't parent it back in because we're going to have a tutorial on just the arm. So you'll see where this controller actually goes. So no matter if you did set driven key or if you decide to do all of your control circles, Again, really, it's the same amount of work no matter which way you do, because you have to do orientations and set up your shapes and to your attribute, you know, min and max. It's really the same work. It's just pure preference. But leave this hand control on its own for now. We'll fix that in the next tutorial, which will be the arms. So that's your hands. Controls or set your ring keys. Your choice as the rig designer. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys have questions, comments, again, please go ahead and post below. Please subscribe. We'll have two more rigging tutorials, again, one on the arms, and then one for skinning. So thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.